Today we're going to review the Zern Online Math Program. Whether you're a homeschool parent looking for a new math curriculum, a parent whose student is using Zern in school, or a parent whose child could use some extra help in math, I've got you covered. We'll go over the entire program so you have everything you need to know to start using Zern today. And of course, at the end of the video, we'll decide if this is actually a good math program or not. For those of you who have never heard of Zern, here is a little overview. Zern is an online math platform that is used by teachers in classrooms throughout the country, but it's also available for parents to use at home. It includes short video lessons with on-screen teachers, real-time feedback on every problem, and reporting tools for parents. Zern Math is designed to be used by elementary and middle school students, and offers a complete math curriculum, so if you're using this for homeschooling, you shouldn't need any other math program. Best of all, this program is run by a nonprofit educational organization and is completely free for parents and kids to use. So let's check out what Zern is all about. The first thing you'll need to do is create a free account. For parents, make sure you choose the I'm an adult option. Then once you put in your information, you can choose your child's school or pick homeschool if you're a homeschool parent. Then choose your role. For homeschoolers, I would choose teacher. For students in school, your child's teacher should have given you a class code to enter. For the rest of you, you'll need to create your own class. Individual accounts get one class, but you can add up to 35 students in a class and each student can be at a different grade level. So if you want to use this for multiple children of different ages, it's totally doable. You can name the class whatever you want, and then you can add your students. You will have the option to choose a unique username and password for each student. Then you will choose their grade level and what mission or unit and topic or lesson you'd like them to start on. For this video, we're going to try out grade four, and we'll just go with the starting points that Zern suggests. Once you've done that, you're ready to begin. We'll take a look at how to change the lessons, find the scope and sequence for the curriculum, and look at the reports in a few minutes. But first, let's take a look at this from the student's point of view. Your child will need their username, password, and class code to sign in. Parents with kids in school will get this class code from their child's teacher. Otherwise, you can find it here. So this is what your child will see when they log into Zern. It should be very simple and easy for them to follow. On the left is their name and class, a calendar which shows the lessons they completed each day, the main window which is next up, and badges that they've earned. Next up is really all they need to know. They will just be completing these lessons in the order they come up, which makes it really simple. The completed lessons are shown here. You can click the X to remove them. There are a few different types of lessons that you'll see here. The units are called missions, and there are several lessons in each mission. You can see here we are working on Grade 4, Mission 1, Lesson 3. The lessons consist of a few different types of activities. They start with fluency activities, which are designed to develop students' procedural fluency and prepare them for the upcoming content. Next, there will be guided practice where they learn new concepts. Finally, there will be some independent practice. Let's take a look at each of them so you can get an idea of what Zern is like for students. So the first activity in this lesson is the number gym. So let's start with that. And you can see we have a timed activity here. If you get something wrong, it's not going to tell you in this activity until the end. Now it's going to show everything we got right. And if we got something wrong, it gives us the chance to try again. 
If we get it wrong again, it's going to show us the right answer. Okay, so that's completed. So we did the first part of the lesson. The second part of the lesson now is the sprint. So this is gonna be another timed activity. Get a couple wrong. And it's giving me the chance to try again here. If I get it wrong again, it's gonna show me the right answer. And there's gonna be round two of the same activity, so I won't make you watch that. All right, the next part here is the math chat. So this is more of the lesson part of it. We'll press play and we'll see a video here. And I just wanna point out that each of these little white circles is when there's an activity in the video. And unlike some other online math programs, you can actually skip ahead to all of these and not watch the video. For me, testing it out, that was great, but I'm not sure if that's such a good thing as far as it goes for students. But you can decide that for yourself. Welcome back, Zerner. Today's lesson is a math chat, so make sure you have a pencil, your headphones, and your Zern student notes. And to get the notes, if you just come up here and click on notes, this is what you're going to want to print out before doing the lesson. So you have this ready while completing the lesson. Let's get started by labeling the place values on this place value chart. I'll write ones here and tens here. Keep going. Finish labeling the place value headings in your place value chart. Here is our place value chart labeled to the millions place. Take a closer look at the headers. Do you notice any similarities and differences in the unit names? Some words repeat, like 10, 100, and 1,000. And the 1,000 unit repeats three times. We started with ones, then tens, then hundreds. We continue with a similar pattern. Beginning with thousands, we start naming new place value units by how many one thousands, ten thousands, and hundred thousands we have. If we follow this pattern, what would the next unit be called after one million? The place value after millions is ten millions. You got it. Let's keep following the pattern. What would the next unit be? The next place value would be hundred millions. Yes. Just like with thousands, we name new units here in terms of how many one millions, 10 millions, and hundred millions we have. After hundred millions, we go to billions. You've noticed a pattern, ones, tens, and hundreds. Then one thousands, ten thousands, and hundred thousands. Then one millions, ten millions, hundred millions, and it keeps going. We use commas to indicate this grouping of units, taken three at a time. For example, look at this number, 
Where are all the commas? Let's put them in. Let's solve this in your notes. Today, we're working on Mission 1, Lesson 3. Let's use the place value pattern to insert commas in this number. We use commas to create groupings of three units, starting with the ones place. Start at the ones and count three place values. Ones, tens, hundreds, comma here. Keep going. Finish placing commas to show groupings of three units. So far, we've been using the place value chart to help us write numbers in standard form and place commas. Are you ready for a challenge? Let's practice going directly from unit form to standard form. Imagine the units in a place value chart first, then write the number in standard form with commas. Excellent work today placing commas and going from unit form to standard form. Keep it up in the Tower of Power. Okay, so now we'll check out the Tower of Power. This is basically the assessment that comes at the end of the lesson. And the idea here is to complete this whole tower and then that's when you're done. So if we get something right, it's gonna start filling up this tower. But if you get something wrong like this, it's going to give you sort of a little help to try to get you to pick the right answer. So it kind of like backs up and gives you a little bit of a additional lesson here. If I still get it wrong, it's going to give me a chance to try again. And now see, I'm starting at the bottom of the tower again. If you do enough of them wrong, it's going to give an alert, which there is a report that shows the tower alerts, which I will show you. So now if we just get them right, we will be able to complete the whole tower. And we've completed the tower. And that takes care of lesson three. So now we have unlocked lesson four. Now that we've seen what Zern looks like from the student's perspective, let's take a look at the parent section. What you see here on the main screen is pretty simple. This is just a link to some resources if you want to share Zern with other parents. This is where you can go to create the student account if you haven't already. Here you can get some free printable supplies. If any of these interest you, you can download and print them for free. If you click here, you can try Zern out as a student without having to log into your child's account and affect their progress. And this is where you can view reports, which we're about to go over together. First, let's look up here at the curriculum. This is where you can view the scope and sequence for each of the grade levels. Click on a grade and you will see an overview here. And then you can view each of the missions here. You can download the course guide PDF here. I encourage you to read through all of this, especially if you plan to use this as your homeschool math curriculum, as it contains a lot of information about the program and how to schedule the lessons. If you click here, you can get access to the materials available in Spanish. If you click below on view mission, you can see all of the lessons that are included in that mission. 
You can click on the different activities to see exactly what your child will be learning. What's really nice about this program is that you can download teaching materials here. This will explain each lesson in detail. You can also download the assessment answer key and foundational guidance PDF. You can download and print the student notes for digital lessons here. If you don't want to print these all at once, you can just have your child print them out as they go, like I showed you when we tested it out. Over here are additional student lesson materials, assessments, and optional problem sets and homework. The report section is where you can view your child's progress and any areas of concern. For kindergarten, there is this activity tracker. I didn't test out the kindergarten program, but here's the report you will see if you're using this for kindergarten. For all other grade levels, you will have access to four different reports. The PACE report shows how many lessons your child is completing by week. It also shows the current lesson they are working on and their last login date. The progress report shows your child's progress through the curriculum. Tower alerts will show you areas where your child may have struggled when completing a tower activity. Sprint alerts show any time your child has gotten less than 10 questions right in both rounds of a sprint activity. If you click over here on assignments, this is where you can change the grade level or mission and lesson that your child should be working on. Just click here and you can change any of these that you need to. The roster is where you can make changes to your class. If you click the settings button here, you will see your student's information. I want to point out here that if you want to remove the timer for the timed activities, you can do that here. Over here, you can get access to additional resources and help. Lastly, you can view and update your account info here. So that's everything that I have to tell you about the Zern Online Math Program. So now comes the part of the video where I tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. First, what I like about the Zern Math Program. Well, number one, it's great that it's completely free. That is hard to find, especially for something high quality. I also like that it's fairly simple to use. Some of the other online programs that are used by teachers, such as Khan Academy or IXL, can be pretty complicated for parents to set up. I also like that the lessons are short and easy to follow. And I love how if your child makes a mistake more than once, they will back up and give your child a little extra help to master the concept before moving on. And now, what I don't like about Zern. Well, I'm not a math teacher, but I did earn my degree in math even though it was kind of a long time ago. So the one thing that I really don't like so much about the Zern Math program is that it's Common Core. And I know a lot of parents have a hard time with this approach. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. So if you're looking for a math program that is not Common Core, you'll have to look elsewhere. I also don't like that there's no room for customization other than just choosing where your child will start. While this simplicity might appeal to some, I tend to prefer programs that allow parents to make more choices to tailor the program to fit their child's unique needs. So overall, I think the Zern Online Math program is good. It's a nice free resource that includes everything that you need to teach your child a full math curriculum. If you're okay with the Common Core approach and are looking for something simple enough for parents and kids to follow, this could be a great choice for you. Click the video on your screen now to learn about another educational resource for parents. Thanks so much for watching.